How's it going everybody? My name is Dan and this is DTM Design. Welcome to another video. So today, instead of a build video, I'm gonna be doing a little tour of my maker's studio slash garage workspace area. So I'm gonna give you a full rundown of like what I have laid out and where everything is in here. So let's get right into it and I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is my airliner food cart. So I bought this on eBay for about 230 bucks um, and turned it into like my tool cart kind of thing. Uh, a lot of people have done this, it's not a new idea in any way, but it's real nice because you can click here, it rolls around real good, it's, uh, you know, can kind of fit into some smaller spaces being skinnier and it's nice and deep and it's pretty cool and you can lock it in place. Um, so yeah, I saw Adam Savage originally uh, do this and that's where I decided to do it myself. Um, so yeah, and you can get it with the original drawers in here. I got mine cheaper because it didn't have the drawers, so you will pay more to get the original drawers. But anyway, so what I keep in here is pretty much, I have like a scroll saw, some sanding stuff, uh, some flock for bases, and I have these drawers that I made for this cart. Now, I, I was originally gonna make uh, more drawers in here. Uh, I just never got to, uh, like a long, uh, like a round to it, I guess. Um, so yeah. Anyways, in this drawer, I'm sure you can see, so I have, strings, chains, uh, like little miniature milk carton things that I've made a long time ago, bits for a Dremel, pens for like fake graffiti, flock, all the kind of stuff to add the nice little detail to some of the mocks and builds I do. Um, you know, you got your weathering pastels, uh, your green stuff epoxy sculpting kind of putty right there, uh, sculpty putty down there, uh, special little brass uh, clamps that I use every once in a while. So yeah, that, all that kind of stuff sits in there. Um, so it's kind of nice to have it all in one area. And then I have all my airbrush paints in the skinnier drawer up here. So it's real nice because I can take this whole thing out and move it wherever I want to around my studio and they're all in the one thing. And then it can just come and slide right back in. Uh, when I first got this thing, this tray pops out. And so I kind of put some like, uh, like fake leather uh, black material that I had on here just because it was like leftover. Um, so kind of like a finishing thing or stuff. Maybe I don't want to get scratched. I'll set down on this. Uh, I've never used it, but it's there. Um, just to add some features to it. Um, on this side, as you can see, I have this cutting mat board that pops up. Uh, I bought these hinges on Amazon. Um, so yeah, they weren't too expensive and just bought a cutting mat from Amazon too and cut all the wood and used the MDF. Uh, painted these caution lines to so you can see the edge of the table. So it's nice to set things on and to give yourself another flat plane to you know put some stuff on. It can't be too heavy on this side because there's no leg to support this. So if I lean on this, this whole thing tips over. It happened to me once, the whole thing broke, I had to rebuild it, it sucked. Um, so yeah, uh, so pretty much I did originally intend to build like a leg that like hung out right here that you could grab and attach here so then it was supported. Uh, I will do that in the future. Um, for right now though, I'm just kind of leaving it as it is because I have this nice table over here to work on. So, and then simply pops back down and makes it nice and easy to stow away if I ever needed to. Um, so yeah, I have this little pencil, pencil sharpener up here. Don't use it too much, but it was just like in my grandfather's garage. And uh, when they were moving everything out of his old house, I just kind of salvaged that from the garage because I thought it was really cool. And this little fish hook thing, uh, I plan to attach that too to hold my respirator mask and all that stuff, but yeah. And then I have these drawers up here that are just kind of sitting here. They're not bolted down or anything on the top. Um, and they just have sandpaper. They have some wires, some brass stuff, some hot glue, uh, some solder, just miscellaneous stuff inside the drawers. Now on this other side, you can see I have, this has my airbrush. There's my air tank and some paints and stuff. Those are not for the airbrush, but those are just regular paints. My hot glue gun and blow dryer, and I have a heat gun in there as well. So yeah, this is pretty much the cart. Um, on the back side is just this blank and I have this uh, power outlet attached. Uh, I do plan on adding like hooks and like a pegboard kind of thing right here to hold tools. And I was gonna have some bungee cord so they like hold it, uh, it holds the tools up against the wood so they don't bounce around if I roll it around. Um, so that's all in the future. I'll definitely upgrade it slowly here. It's been hanging out like this for a while but I will get around to it, so yeah. That is the first part of my little tour uh, for the aircraft airline food cart toolbox. So we'll move on to another section 
of my studio right now. So this is kind of where I just spray paint things. Uh, it is not a beautiful thing to do. I mean, like the car gets over spraying all the time, so I have to be careful of that. Um, and then over in this filing cabinet is just pretty much all my spray paint cans, uh, a bunch of wood under here that gets organized and then gets unorganized like the same day as soon as I grab something from it. Uh, I have my toolbox under here that has laser cutter parts and tools and everything to do that. I have the manual for the laser cutter down here and then just miscellaneous screws and um, stuff in that bag. Nothing too crazy in this section. It's pretty simple. I do have some electrical stuff in here and there's just more trees and flocks and I got those little hooks. There's some, a box of hooks over there that's for the airliner cart to hang stuff on. Um, so yeah, nothing crazy. Uh, and I got some drill bits right there and that's about it. So that's kind of where I paint things. If I have to and it's a big paint job, I go outside uh, just so I don't, because if it's a little thing, the overspray is not too big of a problem. If I go outside, it's a way bigger problem, or it's a less, if it's a bigger paint job and I go outside, it's not, uh, I'm not going to get overspray all over the car, which has happened. So, and I've had to clean it off. Thankfully, it all came off. Anyways, uh, this bandsaw is broken. It's my grandfather's. Uh, I just kind of got it from his house when they're moving everything out and just put it in here. Uh, never have used it really. Um, besides when it was at his house, uh, just cause it's broken. Um, so it's kind of just another flat surface for stuff to pile up on, um, which every workspace has, it seems like. Um, so yeah, let's go over to this part. I'll set you guys down. This is my boss laser cutter. Uh, it's the LS 1420. Yeah. 1420. Um, so yeah, this has, it's pretty, it was quite expensive. I, uh, opened up a credit card with 18, 18 months of no interest so I could easily pay it off and also not pay any extra but also not have to you know have all the money right up in front and then you know just made sure I paid it off in time so I didn't get any interest on it you want to do that to keep your credit score nice so yeah do that <laughs> anyways uh yeah so I use that to cut a whole bunch of stuff laser cut you know do all the buildings and walls and bases and all that kind of stuff I have this uh bucket for distilled water that cools the laser tube that's in the back. I have my Michelin man sitting right there. Uh, he, I don't know, I just like Michelin men, so I have a bunch of those hanging around. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next section, which is my main table, but we'll transition to a new video. All right, everybody, so this is my main table. You see it in all my videos all the time. So in this drawer, I have a bunch of just materials, plastic, card, and all that stuff. I used to have a different organization system, but uh, there was recently some like water flooded and it kind of fucked up a bunch of stuff in here. So uh, I had to toss a bunch of it and just kept what I really, really needed, which is good, helped me clean house. Uh, here's my cutting mat that is disgusting and covered in a bunch of stuff. Um, I have some projects over here. And yeah, so this is kind of where I mainly work a lot. I have storage under here. This cabinet has a bunch of glues and epoxies, uh, fabric and a scale, gloves, um, just a bunch of things, acetone. And then over there we have um, my materials, like wood, there's some foam in there, some acrylics, kind of miscellaneous things, MDF, plywood, birch wood, all that kind of stuff. Um, let me give you guys a closer look here. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much my layout. Nothing too fancy. You got a pegboard, obviously, and all that. I have some miscellaneous signage and things that I just enjoy looking at that I have up there. Um, some of it was purchased, some of it was obtained. That's all I'll say. And uh, so yeah, and then I have all my DVDs and everything right here. I do have a per screen and a projector up there uh, to watch all this stuff if I want to. Um, haven't turned it on in a while just because it's kind of a hassle, but. I can just like set up my like, computer right here and have a better view anyways. Uh, but it's cool to have if I ever go anywhere else. Uh, this box has a bunch of just bits in it and stuff like that. And there's like mold making material in there. Uh, down here is my cabinet, like I was saying earlier. And so as you can see, it has a bunch of fabric, scales, some foam stuff, uh, gloves. I have Super 77, wood glue, resin. Uh, this is all my LEDs and switches and power supplies, and I have acetone and all that kind of stuff back there. And this cabinet is magnetized, so it can, and it rolls around, so everything's mobile for the most part. Same with the laser cutter. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my whole studio. I got a project that's been going on for a while, hanging out right there. And then uh, here's my little case of just cool knickknacks and things that I've... Um, 
that I've just kind of like from my childhood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just find cool. So if you want a more detailed video on all that stuff, let me know. I'll go through everything in there. Uh, as you can see, there's Michelin Man, like I said. Fan of Michelin Man. Uh, it's a cool character logo thing. So yeah, that was pretty much my maker's studio. There's my tripod. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I work all the time. Now the thing is, the reason I made this video and gave this tour of my space is for one reason, and I'll tell you right now. All right, everybody, so the reason I made this tour was because uh, I will be moving uh, from this location. I'll be moving to the East Coast. I live on the West Coast now. I'll be moving to the East Coast and into just an apartment, like a smaller space. Uh, so everything's going to be shrunk down in space. Unfortunately, I have to leave my laser cutter behind for quite a while, but I'll get it back one day and I will have access to another laser cutter, so it's not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be moving and all this stuff will be coming with me and I'll have a new setup. I'll do a video on my brand new little working area or space that I have uh, once I'm done with it. And yeah, you'll see some more build videos come. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe. If you want more frequent updates, you can check out my Instagram, DTM underscore design. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. All right, if you stuck around past the outro, you get the secret tour of my office space as well, not just my work studio. So this kind of counts as part of my work studio. But uh, if you stayed around to the end, you got the special treat of finding out that I even showed this off. So here we go. All right, everyone, so here is my little office that I do a bunch of work in and stuff around here. So let me just start from this side and we'll go around to the end here. So over here is where I usually take uh, photos. I have this little beam set up right here. Whoa, holy shit. Have this little beam set up right here and I kind of put either the black background or the white background up depending on what I feel like shooting for those photos. Um, I have this weird crazy clown boxing match painting that I found at a thrift store uh, and I thought it was really cool so I just bought it and now it lives right there. Um, some people say it looks crazy and it kind of does but whatever. Uh, I have this Tapo Chico chair that I have made that's on swivels. I had a coworker weld this uh, this was given to me, which was a stool before I made it into this stool. It was a shittier stool and it fell apart. And then my brother gave it to me. So then I repainted it. Like I said, friend welded it. And then my girlfriend actually tufted this Tapo Chico uh, rug cushion on top and I glued it on there. So that was really cool. Uh, you can check out a reel of that on my Instagram if you want, DTM underscore design. Uh, anyway, so yeah, this is the table that all the models would sit on when I shoot them. Um, and here are the lights I use, uh, Interfit, if you want to get some of your own. Uh, I have two of them. One of them's out in the garage to do the intros and outros. Um, sometimes I bring them in and use them together. Uh, over here is just a shelf of some books that I like or just have. Um, got an old um, Japanese Star Wars poster, No Country for Old Men, my favorite movie. World War II book, because this is cool. Uh, History of graphic design. These crazy illustrations this guy did, uh, logos and trademarks, silkscreen basics, you know, uh, prosthetics, you know, making masks and uh, props and all that kind of stuff, kind of books, uh, concept ideas. And here's a photo of my bike that I thought was really cool, so I had it printed out. Never got a frame for it, sadly, but this hangs out until I do. Uh, some more prints that just kind of hanging out on the wall here to give the office a vibe. This old Star Wars poster. Um, and then Fool Hall Junkies, one of my favorite movies. Um, yeah, so just kind of things to hang out and around. I have uh, camera stuff here, lights and tripod stuff in there, 3D printing, vinyl, decals, uh, just things that are just hanging out like cardstock stuff. Now, since you waited to the end, I bought this. I bought it off offer up. I didn't go to Disneyland. Uh, I didn't want to go to Disneyland just to buy this, so I bought it from a guy on offer up. It's uh, from the, the Rebel show. It's uh, Chopper is his name. And what I'm going to be doing is just repainting him, giving him like more detail, like putting wires. Jeez, the reflection is so bad. Putting real wires and stuff there and just replacing things and just making it look more real and just making him cooler. So that's just hanging out there for now. I haven't got around to that. So there's a little sneak preview of a video that may be coming out in the near future here. Uh, I have my Ender 3 printer. I have stuff for packaging up stuff, headphones, 
scissors, miscellaneous pens, rulers, um, that, I forget what the name of that is, rubber roller. Uh, here's my computer. And then I have my microphone, miscellaneous objects. This is my vinyl plotter. So this is how I cut stickers and stencils and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I have some calipers in there and my laptop over here for mobility computer use this is usually used for the laser cutter and all that stuff. And then right here, I have my AnyCubic with, this is my SLA printer. So a bath of resin, the tray goes down, slowly builds up the, the model, comes out, rips all the resin off, you clean it, you cure it, smoother print, cooler for smaller fine details that you can't do on a PLA printer like that over there. And then, yeah, so then these are just boxes and resin that are hanging out. There's nothing in the boxes, just in case I ship something. Now, again, here you go, getting a sneak preview of some builds that are coming in the future. Thanks for waiting to the end here. Um, so you've already seen this build of this giant Lego guy, and he was fun, he was cool. He was a little inaccurate once I looked at him, the real figure and stuff, and so then I went and purchased a file that was highly, way more accurate, and now I have a whole little army of giant Lego things being built. Um, so yeah, this one, let's give you a rundown of who we're doing here. This is gonna be Darth Maul. Um, I have his lightsaber right here. So yeah, that's gonna be Darth Maul. Then we have this guy right here and we have short legs. So if you wanna guess, it's gonna be a Jawa. Um, and then I also printed out a body for a C-3PO. And I'm gonna be doing the Chrome C-3PO from Phantom Menace. Uh, not C-3PO, but the style of droid is. I don't 100% sure what it's called again, but you get my point. So yeah, I have all these parts, and then I do have the infamous Jar Jar Binks head right here printed out. He has no body or anything yet, but I'll get around to printing that. Um, I have all these to make first. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to see, like, here's the acrylic I'll be using for the lightsaber. So yeah, I'm trying to make it pretty accurate and close to the real Legos. I've seen some people building some large Lego people recently and you know I just not to be cocky but I think I could do it a lot better and I am gonna do it better. So yeah this is a future project. Hope you guys will enjoy seeing that in the future. Thank you again for watching this video. You stuck around to the end and then you got the sneak peek of the interior office. There's also my TV. Watch a bunch of stuff on there. Um, you got a sneak peek of the office so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, again, like I said, I'm moving to New Jersey, so all, I'm going to have to downsize everything. The computer space and all that stuff is going to be all in one workspace soon. So, um, yeah, see you guys later.